Hey y'all, it's Laura and welcome back to a Coco Vanilla Studio video. This time we are using the Fantastic Storyteller Collection again because I am obsessed. I fully admit that I am completely obsessed with this collection. I can't get enough of it and I am stretching it so far because I'm just determined to get as many layouts out of it as possible and I am enjoying the heck out of it. Now one of the things that I do to stretch a collection is sometimes I will cut lots of little strips and use little strips instead of big pieces of pattern paper and other times I will fussy cut bits and pieces out of the pattern papers like butterflies or florals or just shapes like stars and hearts and use those to create backgrounds as well and all of those little techniques just help your collection go a little bit further and then you can use things like cardstock as your background and that helps to stretch that collection out so those beautiful papers can be used for way more layouts that way now on this particular layout we are scrapping photos of my dog Gracie who has passed unfortunately uh, both of my dogs passed recently and I have decided to go ahead and honor Gracie in particular in this video and I love animals we've had pets my whole life literally my whole life my family has had pets and it absolutely feels strange not to have one at the moment and it's been one of those like readjusting things to not having a pet in the house and what really has thrown me and let me know if this is you too the sound of them moving around is not even the thing that I'm missing or or just noticing is missing but just the general energy in the room of there being someone else in the room so my dogs were very old they were I think 13 and 15 and they have had health problems for quite a while so they were mostly sleeping in my room and yet that's what I miss like I, I seem to be very aware that they're not here and they were not very noisy creatures so it, at first I was like what what is this that's just messing with me what is it that is just absolutely so glaringly obvious it's that energy it's that just them moving around a little bit you know the little noises that humans and dogs and cats make when they're around uh, the breathing that that sort of thing that just kind of lets you know they're there and that has been such a strange thing to adjust to is not having them making those noises around me because they were always pretty close and uh, yeah so that's been that's been hard that's been a tough transition for the family but I, I on another note I am grateful I am grateful that we had so much time with them uh, Gracie was with us for I believe eight years and seven years seven years she was with us for seven years and then Emma was with us for 13 I believe and so that means we have had a good long time with these pups and I am so grateful for that time because they were just amazing amazing pets probably won't get another pet anytime soon uh, just because I think we need a break I'm going to school full-time and <laughs> so are the kids and it's it's kind of a lot right now and I don't think I'm ready to, to take on a puppy at the moment but I am really enjoying looking through our old photos I took a lot of photos of the dogs because of course they're practically my children <laughs> I have five kids and I had two dogs and so our house was absolute chaos most of the time but uh, it was a good kind of chaos it was a fun chaos and I, I love that for us now little Miss Gracie here is uh, the queen of sass as you might could tell from this larger photo <laughs> this was taken when I was doing some homework on the couch using my laptop and uh, she did not appreciate being ignored while I did my homework as it turned out but she uh, decided to make this really funny little face little position on her own and so I just grabbed my phone and took her picture she was not amused by me taking her picture either I should add but these two smaller photos are just of her sleeping that's where she spent most of her time recently was sleeping because she was getting older and just wasn't really feeling well and uh, I am grateful that they are not in pain or sick or anything like that anymore um, but we do miss them of course we miss them like crazy now what have I got going on here with this layout now that I've blathered on about the dogs for almost five minutes I have these photos arranged in kind of a stair-step design 
And I do this so that I can create openings and places to add embellishment. So this is very intentional. I've added my larger four x four photo. I have two two by two photos next to it. And I'm leaving openings at the top and the bottom of those smaller photos to the side of the smaller photos that kind of beg for clustering. And that is a great way. If you don't know where to put your clusters once you've added your photos to the page, think about that first. Think about how you're clustering your photos together or how you're clustering your papers and your photo together so that you can create spaces that just beg for clustering, that just beg for a little bit of embellishment because that will feel like a very natural place to put your clusters and you won't have to sit there and analyze your page afterwards. So as you can see, I'm pulling in some of my fussy cutting items, which is a kind of a go-to for me. I love to use fussy cut pieces. A lot of these are cut apart pieces from the Storyteller Collection and I'm gonna use those first kind of flip through the little banners and flags and the three by four cards but I've also cut in an A5 stack size cut apart so there's the 12 by 12 size and then the smaller paper pack I cut apart both that way I have plenty of embellishments to choose from so like this little heart card that I'm playing with right now is from the A5 paper stack it is a three by four card in the 12 by 12 size, but in the A5 paper stack size, it's much smaller. And so you can use it for a journaling card, for embellishments, just like I'm using it here to just tuck it in for just something a little bit fun right there next to my photos that fills in that space. It's endless opportunities when you have so many embellishments in a collection. And I love that Zoe includes these cut aparts that can also be used as embellishments. On top of the three by four cards and the little banners, they, she also adds some little banners, uh, some little like 12 inch strips. So like those little half inch or one inch, 12 inch strips. And I often fussy cut those out as well. Uh, they often have like a lot of repeating patterns and I'll just fussy cut out the tiny little icons in there. And then we have the little word phrases and strips. I have those fussy cut in the red bowl and I'll use those as well. So that's usually where I start is I will go for the cut aparts first because that's just paper. <laughs> it allows my collection to stretch so much further when I have these paper uh, cut apart pieces to play with first. And then I will dip into the more expensive embellishments, which of course we will do because I absolutely love love the embellishments in this collection. There is so much fun in this one. It has the wood buttons. We have the little, what are the little puffy hearts. I absolutely adore those. Love the ephemera, two packs of ephemera. I mean, there's just so many pretty things to play with. And then you have stickers. So it's just sometimes hard to stop and go, okay, Laura, you can't use all of the things on one page. <laughs> but oh, do I want to? I, I really, really want to. And this is one of those layouts where I really wanted to. I do end up adding quite a bit, I think. And I love how this one turned out. It's a very simple vertical layout, which means I've created a background using just strips of paper in a vertical pattern and vertical direction and then added my photos on top. This is one of my favorite go-tos. So if you are stuck and you don't know where to start, do a vertical layout. They're so easy and they're so fun and they're just just such a versatile design. I just find it so easy to use for any combinations of photos and especially because I tend to use more profile style, style photos. So the uh, rectangle goes up and down <laughs> vertically, funny enough, and vertical layouts work really well for that. Now, if you prefer to do a lot of horizontal or side to side style photos, uh, I find a similar style in horizontal works really well for those. So you can take these strips of paper and run the other way. And that's another great way, just a very simple background, but it creates such a fun design and you, you can use these patterns. So I've used three pieces of pattern paper here to create this background. And those hearts really stand out and add a lot of pop and punch to this layout. But the nice solid color designs in the background. They're not solid papers. They have little bits of design on them, but they're solid colored. They kind of tone that down just a little bit and add a little bit of a dimension with my layering of those strips behind the main piece of paper. Now here is the ephemera pack. This is the main ephemera pack and I'm going to bring in this lovely little banner underneath of my photos. I'm also going to bring in a little uh, word phrase 
kind of subtitle there underneath the main photo. And this adds a lot of whimsy and softens the more linear look of this layout. Because I've used a lot of rectangles and squares, it has a very linear base, which is typically where I start my layouts. But then I've gone in and added these softer things like the doily and these embellishments that have rounded corners and that softens that linear look and gives it more of a whimsical feel and i really like that balance of the linear and the whimsical in my layouts i think it creates a really fun effect on the page and keeps it from feeling too boxy because sometimes when we're using rectangle and square photos and then rectangle and square backgrounds it can feel kind of boxy on the page and you need those rounded corners and the butterflies and the hearts and things to soften that look and just give it a little little bit more interest. Now for my title, I decided to pull in the foam words and I'm going to add it just underneath of my photos on the left side. So I have cut apart a word phrase from the ephemera icon next to that smaller photo. And then I'm going to add my title right underneath of that. And it's just going to nestle in there perfectly. I love nestling my titles. You'll see that I do it a lot. And I think it really helps to tie the title in with the layout design itself so it's not standing out on its own. Now, I do on occasion make a title stand out on its own, but typically that is when I've kept the rest of the layout so super simple that that title can stand out but doesn't pull away from the photo's focus. In this case, this title is black and so it is going to stand out quite a lot from this white background and so i've chosen to keep it tucked in close to my photos so that the focus still is on the photos you're not wandering off the layout looking for the title it's still nice and close to my photos my photos don't don't lose their focus their focal image status if you will of the layout so this is going to say you are so cute and I'm just going to arrange my words just to kind of follow the line of that yellow strip of paper in the background and the side of my photos to help it nestle into that spot perfectly. Now to finish off this layout, I am going to add some detail work and that's just those last little bits and pieces that I add around my clusters in particular to give the finishing touches to the layout. Off camera, I have gone ahead and trimmed off the white edges on my banners as well as some of the other embellishments because I just prefer my embellishments not to have the little white outline. If you like that, that's totally fine. I just find that not having that white outline helps it to blend in a little better with the layout layout and not stand out too much because again I want my photos to be the main focal image at all times and if I have some stickers or some icons that have that white outline I find that they stick out quite a lot on a pattern paper background or in this case a pattern paper vertical strip and so I just trim that off and it blends right in and it looks quite nice. I am gonna add some journaling lines, of course, because I journal on just about every layout, but especially on a layout like this one that has a really special memory attached to it, I definitely wanna put in at least some small thoughts about the photos, what's going on, why did I take the photos, things like that that you can include, as well as the date. I do typically put the date that the photos were taken as well. Finishing up with some scattering and splattering, those tiny little details were my scattering. And now my splattering is in two stages with Nouveau drops, usually in gold, but I do use some other neutrals as well. And then some Heidi Swap Color Shine, which is just a golding spray. And I use that to splatter around the outside. It just gives a really nice whimsical effect and finishes off the layout for me. That's just one of those steps that really for me makes it feel finished. That's it for this one. Be sure to check out the blog at cocovanilla.com.au for more photos and some more details about this layout, as well as inspiration from all the other designers. Until next time, bye y'all.